1562 of the Sixth Astral Era was a year of profound import for Eorzea. A decade before the Seventh Umbral Calamity would befall the realm, a titanic battle took place. A cataclysmic event in its own right struck Mordona, leaving the land changed and setting the stage for events to come in the Battle of Silver Tear Skies. First, some context. For many long millennia past, the ancient father of dragonkind on Hydaelyn, Midgard Somer, came to this star, which bears the name Hydaelyn, from his home of the Dragon Star. When he arrived, he was all but spent and made a pact with the Mother Crystal, the entity known as Hydaelyn. If he should protect the waters of Silvertear Falls, he and his brood would be allowed safe haven on this world. And in so acquiescing, he bound his fate and that of his kin to this star. Thousands of years later, after the rise and fall of many civilizations, Midgard Somer maintained an ever-present vigil over Mordona and Silvertear, prepared to defend the land and its ethereal font of energy should the need arise. It was in the year 1557 of the Sixth Astral Era, five years before the Battle of Silvertear Skies, amidst the Alamegan Civil War, the Garlean Empire would annex their state of Alamigo, the closest region of Eorzea to Garlemald. This granted the Garlean Empire a new launching ground from which they could begin their campaign to conquer Eorzea. The nations of Eorzea responded in their own ways. Charlayan would send envoys in order to implore peace, but despite their overtures of diplomatic relations, the pleas only found deaf ears within the empire. The other nation states quickly formed an alliance to stand united against the Garlean threat. However, Charlayan would not join them. Their utter abhorrence of war, regardless of context, saw to this. So was the state of Eorzea for five short years, with Garlemald focusing on assimilating its newfound territory of Alamigo and preparing for its next move. With the world sitting on the precipice of war, it was only a matter of time before conflict rang out. And so it did. In 1562, the 14th Imperial Legion under the command of Gaius van Balesar and led by its flagship, the Agrius, tore its way into Mordona. With Silver Tear Falls acting as both a figurative and literal heart of Eorzea, and being a great confluence of Aether, the energy source of all natural life and crystals, Silver Tear was a perfect point from which the Garlean Empire could expand out into the rest of the continent. As the Garlean fleet approached Silver Tear Lake, however, they were not prepared for what came next. An onslaught of Dravanians, dragons of the air struck the mass of ships, and the sky was filled with the flash of flame and gunfire. It was as the Garleans seemed to be fighting the dragons to a standstill that for a single moment, silence rang out. Gunfire that had encircled the Agrius halted, only to renew itself, only now pointed to the clouds above. Midgard Sormir, dread king of dragons, had been summoned forth to do battle. His song had called his children to his side to defend his pact with Hydaelyn. He fired huge blasts of energy from his maw, wreaking destruction upon the Agrius and many of its surrounding ships. There was little at this point the Garleans could do but look on in horror as the mighty worm coiled itself around the flagship. What had been the pride of Garlemald, the invincible airship, now began its final descent being pulled down to the lake below. The ship crashed into the waters, and Midgard Summer, still entwined with it, let out a roar of victory and of warning. It was in that moment that the ceruleum tanks of the Agrius ignited, an explosion so great that it broke something deep within the world. The explosion, combined with the ambient aether of the surrounding lands, created a chain reaction that blasted a beam of etheric energy into the skies. A swell of power so great that it slew the Dragon King and left the land forever marred. What was left of the 14th Legion's fleet would retreat in fear, and the land lay damaged and torn, and all too quiet. Together, the dragon and airship rested entwined, half buried in the lake. All was silent, belying the rending of the land that had just taken place and the chaos to come in future days. Midgard Samir had done his duty to Hydaelyn. The lake, for a time, was safe and still. 
but at what cost? The land of Mordona was twisted into a realm of crystal. What once had been verdant and green now lay still and lucent. The very flora and grass of the land shattered like glass underfoot. Most, if not all, the inhabitants of the region were crushed by falling airships and debris, and those few who may have survived were quickly swallowed up in the explosion and ensuing corruption. This wanton loss of life is the origin of the name Revenant's Toll, for so many died that day that there was none to mourn their passing, save for the other dead. The Garleans would retreat and lick their wounds for a time, only to one day return in force, with the Seventh Legion, led by Nail Van Darnus, constructing great bastions of steel throughout the lands, including Castrum Sentry, within Mordona. It is noted that after the Battle of Silvertier Skies, the primal summoning of the Beast Tribes began in earnest. It is presumed that something in the discharge of Aether caused by the detonation of the Agrius broke some form of seal or barrier on the Aether of Silvertier, leading that Aether into Eorzea allowing more ready access to crystals and aether-rich materials. Regardless of the truth, the correlation between these events is undeniable. This same blast that changed Eorzea would act as an omen ringing out across the waters to a doomed city, though that is a tale for another time. Some 15 years later, at the beginning of the seventh astral era, the entwined bodies of the Agrius and Midgard Somir still stands sentry in the Lake of Silvertier. Now called the Keeper of the Lake, its enigmatic presence is both a testament to the pains of the past and a guard of the future. Some still to this day say that they witness the Keeper stir from time to time, though these are probably just fanciful tales. This content was brought to you by the Eorzean Archives. I'm Archon Charette Tia. And I'm Archon Elio Faucheron. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and comment down below any topics you might also be interested in.